Hello. Hello, hello. Hi. Um, so, uh, my name is Philip, and uh, I came here to talk about LARP in a, in a fine art context. And um, what I want to discuss is why, um, wh I like why we document LARP and how we can exhibit it in a fine art context. I'm here to talk about not uh, LARP as art, but art about LARP and how uh, that has been put into practice uh, in a contemporary setting. Um, uh, I think, firstly, I wanted to talk, sort of discuss, what I want, what I want to discuss is the um, art world uh, definition of art, which is essentially that art is what takes place within the art world. And so what I mean by fine art is uh, art that is, it exists in a very particular context. Um, so if we look at, uh, just I'm just going to quickly take us back and... Um, to discuss, uh, uh, we can see this is a depiction of um, a number of spectators uh, in the Colosseum. It probably didn't look like this, but we can sort of suppose that what they are doing is uh, some kind of uh, role playing. Uh, and, uh, this, and we can see here role playing as a subject of art. And fast forward uh, several thousand years, there is a there is a vision in which um, a lot of artists developed a practice that seems to resemble what we could maybe call proto-LARP. Um, and uh, one that's really interesting to me is uh, it occurred in um, 1920. And I can show you a photograph of it here. Uh, what this is, is the... Um, storming of the Winter Palace. So the storming of the Winter Palace is an event that some of you may remember from history as a pivotal event within the Russian Civil War and the Bolshevik Revolution. And this photograph was originally thought to be an actual photograph of the storming of the Winter Palace by the Red Army. Uh, we now know that this is actually, took, uh, which took place in 1917, this photograph dates to 1920. And what had occurred is a movement, um, uh, Russian futurism, which of, of avant-garde artists collaborated with a director called Nikolai Ervirenov. And Nikolai, I'm probably mispronouncing his name, but Nikolai arranged for more than 2,600 soldiers and uh, innumerable civilians to essentially reenact the storming of the Winter Palace three years after it had actually been stormed, using people who had actually been in the storming of the Winter Palace. And it's very interesting that this was organized by what were seen to be primarily anti-establishment artists. And um, it, it provides a context for... something that I'm opening up to discussion, as one of the earliest uh, uh, LARPs crea uh, created by, by artists for a purely sort of exploratory endeavor, even though it was, of course, a propaganda effort as well, we have the, the LARP script for it. And, and I've been trying to find a better quality image of this. Um, it's in uh, Moscow, as you can imagine. Um, OK, so LARP. Um, uh, has been uh, very recently um, been exhibited in uh, in a fine art context, primarily in three modes. Uh, the first being the ready-made or the objet trouvé. Um, the say, or the second is design document.
context, the art historical context for these usages and then how they are, have been applied to art about LARP. Um, so, so ready-mades, Whether Mr. Mutt, uh, with his own hands, made the fountain or, or not, has no importance. He chose it. He took it, an ordinary article of life, and placed it so that its useful significance disappeared under the new title and point of view, and created a new thought for that object. Now, of course, there's some interesting art but what I would point to you is the first um, phrase, which is, whether Mr. Mutt, with his own hands. Now, we know that Mr. Mutt is... Um, uh, Duchamp himself, and there is an interesting idea of whether Duchamp is role-playing as Mr. Mutt or as someone who doesn't know who Mr. Mutt is, and that provides an interesting sort of viewpoint. But um, what this later develops into um, is uh, an artwork that some of you may be familiar with, which is Trace Yemen's My Bed. Now, Trace Yemen's My Bed involved Trace Yemen. object, uh, artists presenting their were the objects used in LARP as uh, objects that portray a significance deeper than, the, than they first appear. Um, in, uh, in a LARP that uh, I co-designed with a performance artist called Bart Price, uh, the, uh, we used test tubes, um, which you can see here. This was actually the photograph of the test tube that um, was found that, that Amazon presented uh, us with when we ordered the test tubes. And we printed this in a large glycerin print. And in the exhibition, we presented a photograph of the um, Amazon order image. Uh, Ed Forniellis, in his LARP Animal House, uh, produced the carpet that um, the, LARP, the LARP involved a uh, frat house, a fictional American college frat house, and there was a carpet in the main room where the LARP took place, and he hung the carpet on a wall, and this was actually presented at Carlos of Chicago, which was a renowned contemporary gallery in London, and sold. Um, uh, I'm not sure for how much, but it's, it's, it's interesting that people are using these, uh, these you know, uh, forms with a huge amount of art historical background in creating uh, art about LARP. So that's ready-made. Now, what I want to talk about now is um, pre design documents and process art, or, or LARP scripts. Uh, so in the making of a LARP, as I'm sure many of you know, there, there is a huge amount of documentation that gets produced, and we can handily divide this documentation into the documentation that is provided to players or, and the documentation that is kept within the uh, designer's 
um, holdings, or you know, depending on your style, of course, everyone does this differently. But um, and and what uh, people like Forney Ellis and Price are doing nowadays is is presenting uh, their design documents, in a sense, the process of making the LARP as art objects themselves. And of course, this too has a huge amount of precedence within art history. Uh, the father of process art is, of course, um, uh, Jackson Pollock. And so what Jackson Pollock does, and Jackson Pollock actually combines ready-mades with process art because the principal interpretation of Jackson Pollock's dripping paintings involves the fact that he is pointing out the actual act of painting itself. And he also incorporates bits like, you know, his toenails and, uh, and pieces of his, you know, his watch and rings and coins in the, you can't see it in this image, but if you ever look at a Jackson Pollock um, up close, you can see that within the paint are all of these found objects that are, arise from him making the painting and he sort of leaves them there. Uh, and uh, a, a more explicit example of process art is um, John Hillard's camera recording its own condition, seven apertures, 10 speeds, two mirrors. And this is a photograph depicting the act of photography. And in much the same way, when people make uh, art about LARP, they produce art that depicts the art of LARP making. So, Whereas the ready-mades are in some way about the LARP itself, process art about LARP is about the process of making LARP and seeks to, in some way, um, provide insight into the, uh, the, 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 you know, the designing process itself. Uh, here we, I have some, um, this is some, this is just two very random screenshots of a uh, website that was produced by um, uh, Price, uh, Bart Price and I in, in presenting our LARP uh, at uh, the Royal College of Art. And we immediately publicized all of the uh, design documents and the inspiration and the mood boards and the Pinterest. Everything was accessible from a website, which I sadly can't show to you now, but um, you can find uh, later. Um, but the, the interesting thing about this is that also when um, we combine all of these things, uh, we, you can produce and both you can produce an interactive page in which everything about the LARP is revealed. Uh, and the boundaries between designer and, uh, and player and finally viewer, right, are, are um, taken down. Finally, uh, media is um, the most obvious and perhaps most controversial uh, form of LARP documentation that um, it, in that, insofar that it uh, seeks to, or has the side effect of um, affecting the um, ephemerality that we come to so cherish within LARPing. Uh, what, what seems to me to be the, the chief tension is that in, doc, in, in filming or photographing a LARP, we lose some of the immersion and also some of the freedom that, uh, in, in the LARP process itself. And uh, so whereas some artists who have made art about LARP have chosen to film and um, photograph LARPs directly and from a a perspective, you know, from a, wh where the players have had to ignore the filming taking place. One way in which uh, myself and Bart have incorporated this is in thinking about it as essentially as fundamental to the LARP itself. When we first set out making LARP, we were interested in making LARP about uh, people from the people we knew and about people from our age group. And we looked at, uh, and we were interested in making LARP about speculative futures. What we found to be essential is to incorporate social media within the LARP itself. And so, partly for practical reasons, but really ser serendipitously, 
um, when we first designed our lab, we couldn't actually physically hold a space. So every participant created a social media profile, and the LARP, the first, the LARP took place for two to three weeks entirely online. And uh, LARPers posted photographs and Instagram stories and created Twitter handles, and this seamlessly integrated into the in-person experience because every character was in some ways a influencer or a live streamer. And thus, the filming took place not with one character who happened to be a photographer, which is a way that um, has been done in the past, but instead, each character filmed themselves from their own perspective so that the media that they produced was not only a record of the LARP, but a record of their own subjective view as well. And uh, this came naturally to the participants who were all very young and very adept at, the, at, at using uh, social media and whose characters had been written explicitly with these intentions in mind. And fame and identity and the replication of that was uh, a crucial part of this experiment. Um, and um, in some ways, I think it was impossible for us to create a LARP that did not uh, have that as its element. Uh, and um, one way in which we did this in a sort of meta-technique way uh, that may perhaps be of use is that uh, we looked uh, a lot at uh, Big Brother and the infamous couch room in Big Brother where one sits in an armchair and confesses uh, is, um, was, was, was a key part of, uh, of our experience. And uh, players would come in and you know, use it both as a space to sort of rest from social interaction, but to go deeper within their character. Um, and uh, Ed Forniellis, in his uh, artistic LARP pro practice, um, or rather, I would say all LARP practices are artistic, uh, of course, but um, his, uh, his, his fine art practice has uh, employed um, characters who are photographers, and he's produced large-scale photographs, like this one, um, which you can see here, which came from the same lot that I was referring to earlier, Animal House, um, obviously, uh, and, and was also printed on a large-scale glycerin paper and uh, exhibited at Freeze London. Now, uh, obviously, the use of uh, Polaroids is, 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 is very important, and, uh, and the self-filming. Uh, um, now, finally, the last thing. I, so, how, the last thing I want to show you is how all of these different elements are put together in the installation and exhibition of uh, of of LARP, art about LARP. And so, the the key here is the question that we're, we were asking and why we're doing this is not, not just because LARP is a fascinating thing to make art about, but um, also to, in some way, uh, lure more people to LARP, and also to, to share and to examine uh, questions surrounding identity and, um, and, and constructed uh, social realities. So one way in which this has been done by Ed is in uh, creating installations. Um, like, uh, this one, which was uh, uh, an installation about Animal House, at uh, Emelin Gallery in Los Angeles. Uh, all the, uh, this is a combination of new materials and ready-made objects from uh, the LARP itself. And here is a, a booth at uh, the Freeze London Art Fair in which uh, there was a LARP called Character Date, which took place, I think, mostly online. And uh, you can view some of the interactions between the characters on a screen. There are objects around, and the booth itself seeks to sort of somehow reflect, perhaps not the physical landscape, but the emotional and psychological landscape of uh, the uh, of the lab. And you know, I, I this is I just wanted to um, open up this sort of discussion on uh, on on how to document LARP, and uh, I just thought I'd just give you some ideas. <laughs> So thank you.